thousands of years, the summit of what came to be known as Mount Everest had remained untouched by human beings. But after years of obsessively dreaming about it, months of planning, and seven weeks of climbing, New Zealander Edmund Hillary did the impossible. He became the first man in recorded history to reach the summit of Mount Everest, the highest mountain in the world. Now, needless to say, that climbing Mount Everest is extremely dangerous. Besides the freezing weather, which puts climbers at risk of extreme frostbite or even death, and the obvious potential for long falls from cliffs and into deep crevasses, climbers of Mount Everest frequently suffer from the effects of extreme high altitude, often called altitude or mountain sickness. Most climbers of Everest at the very least experience headaches, cloudiness of thought, lack of sleep, loss of appetite, and fatigue. Any of those symptoms sound a little familiar? Yeah. Now the summit of Mount Everest is some 29,029 feet. And the critical first base camp, which is what we're talking about here, and I'll share more with you in a moment, is established at about 16,000 vertical feet. Now that doesn't make for a very good night's sleep, I have to say. But it allows the climbers to acclimate to the altitude, rest a bit, and make sure that their bodies are prepared for the grueling trek to the summit, or at least its attempt. In fact, not everyone who tries for the summit makes it there. Climbers often make several failed attempts to reach their goal and wind up having to return to base camp several times before achieving success, which of course is no guarantee. Well, after months of planning and organizing, Hillary's expedition finally began to climb. And on the way up, the team established nine camps. That's right, he had a team. He did not attempt to go this alone. He had a team consisting of five men, two summit partners, and a guide. Now, Hillary's partner, who became famous as well, and finally reached the summit with Hillary, was the Napolese Sherpa Tenzeg Norgay. And the two men left their final base camp at 6.30 a.m. in the morning, and after five grueling and challenging hours, finally made it to the summit at 11.30 that morning. They had achieved something that was believed for centuries to be impossible. Now, how does all this relate to you and your goals? Well, it relates to you and your goals and objectives in three specific ways. The first has to do with planning. Recall that Hillary and his team first planned for months before embarking on their trek. And although most worthwhile goals won't necessarily require months of planning and preparation, they will require some. And like the rules of mountaineering, there are achievement rules that need to be understood and applied if you're going to reach your personal summit. Break the rules of mountaineering or make up your own rules along the way and you could plummet to your death. Break the rules of achievement and you could wind up failing or worse. Those rules are outlined in the number one best-selling book, Seven Rules of Achievement. But how you find them isn't as important as applying those rules to create at least a fundamental or a more elaborate plan for success. The second way in which is Hillary's ascent applies to your own life and your goals is about applying the base camp concept. Recall that base camp is where you acclimate both physically and mentally for the trek ahead. Your body and the level of rapport and trust that you have with it will make a difference. The difference between freezing to death on some steep cliff face waiting for someone to come and rescue you or making it all the way to your summit. Trying to conquer a mountain, like trying to conquer your personal goals, will likely require a giant leap of faith at some point. And without every cell of your body being on the same page from a physical and even an emotional perspective, you're far more likely to fall into a crevasse never to be seen again rather than leap to the other side where everything that you want is waiting for you. This you must first reestablish rapport with your body while at base camp and before attempting your summit. Meaning you had better know, like, and certainly trust your body to take you all the way.
The third way it relates is about team. It's also about having a guide to help you navigate the unfamiliar terrain and recognize and avoid obstacles along the way. No one in their right mind would ever suggest that Hillary could have made it to the summit, much less survive the trek if he had attempted it on his own. In fact, Sir Hillary himself humbly gave most of the credit to his partner and Sherper Tenzik Norgay and the rest of his teammates for his success. Having a team, a coach, a mentor, or a guide to help you navigate that unfamiliar terrain, identify obstacles, and provide moral support along the way when it's needed is like filling your success fuel tank with nitrous oxide and finally taking your foot off the brake and flooring the gas pedal. So let's do a reality check-in for a moment. I want you to ask yourself this question. Have you been scratching away at the cold tundra with no real plan? Unsupported by like-minded team members, a coach or a mentor? And physically or maybe even emotionally unacclimated for the trek ahead? If so, it's time to change all that. Maybe it's time to take a mountaineering lesson from a guide who knows how to reach the summit in life, business, and play. Maybe it's time to learn more about the life-altering experience to leap coaching process. I'm Tom Terwilliger, and I'll see you at the summit.